ஹரி ஓம் சிவச்சிதம்பரம் தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் பீங் கியர் திஸ் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் த டாபிக் இஸ் தார்மிக் அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேட்டிவ் ஃப்ரேம் ஒர்க் ஃபார் அவர் டெம்பிள்ஸ் தட் இஸ் கரண்ட்லி தீஸ் டெம்பிள்ஸ் ஆர் அண்டர் தி கண்ட்ரோல் ஆஃப் கவர்மெண்ட் ஸ்டேட் கவர்மெண்ட்ஸ் இன் தமிழ்நாடு இன் ஒரிசா இன் ஆந்திர பிரதேஷ் இன் தெலுங்கானா இன் கர்நாடகா இன் கேரளா ஆல்சோ மகாராஷ்டிரா அண்ட் அதர் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங்லி வெஸ்ட் பெங்கால் டஸ் நாட் கண்ட்ரோல் இன் டூ டெம்பிள்ஸ் பட் ஐ டோல் தி கண்ட்ரோல் இட் இன் ஐ இன்டெரக்ட் வே ஓகே சாரி டு ஸ்டார்ட் சம்திங் வித் ஃபுல்லி தமிழ்ஸ் பிக்சர் பட் திஸ் இஸ் தி ஃப்ரண்ட் பேஜ் நியூஸ் தட் ஆர் கம் இன் அ லீடிங் தமிழ் டெய்லி விச் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் அண்ட் ஒன் தௌசண்ட் ப்ளஸ் க்ரோட் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டி கிவன் ஆஸ் அ கிஃப்ட் to Parani Subramanya Swami, Tandayadabani Swami Temple by a devotee. Where is that property? This is taken from an audit report of the temple. 1,000 crore worth estates, factories, lands, buildings, houses. A huge gift disappeared. Now, I talked about this coming from the audit. i am showing all these pictures just to show how the temples that are being administered by government how well are they administered the number of audit objections this is only an internal audit there are no external audits for temples in tamil nadu or in andhra or in karnataka only internal audit even if the temple gets 10 crores or 20 crores or 200 crores income there is no external audit even for tirupati there is no external audit whereas if your turnover is more than 2 crores under the income tax act you have to have a compulsory audit i am told 1.3 million audit objections pending as on 2016 and the sum is about 740 crores and these are pending some of them are pending from 1986 which means the audit objections made against some of the officers they have since retired some of them met with their natural death also this is the same case in andhra pradesh also okay this is simachalam temple and the years somewhere in 2008 2009 and you see 1346 audit objections pending this is a temple which is about 1300 years old in kumbakonam if you see 1 feet away there is a hotel a modern hotel which has come up just 1 feet away from the temple gopur that means we have absolutely no respect for our temples no respect for our heritage sites and we don't worry about how it will affect the ancient gopur you might have heard about sri kalahasti temple in andhra this is how the temple tower looked before it crumbled down you could see the cracks there how does a temple tower crack any idea our temples do not have deep foundations any building which has deep foundations are susceptible to earthquakes if you notice an earthquake the huts will be minimum damaged smaller houses will be somewhat damaged multi story buildings will be definitely be damaged unless they are built in such a way to be earthquake proof next to kalahasti temple lodges were allowed to be built bore wells were allowed to be dug and this shake the equilibrium of the tower before it cracked and it fell down the temple tower was 500 years old when it fell to pieces it was built by one of the greatest kings who saved south india krishna devaraya i am showing all this just to show what can happen under a government this again would be in tamil but uh, you can see the numbers right those of you uh, who do not know tamil these are the total land holdings of a single temple in tamil nadu the vedarangeshwara temple 
28,000 acres as per government records. This is not correct. The actual holdings is about 33,000 acres plus 5,000 acres in Sri Lanka, which is only 60 kilometers away from the temple. The average income from each acre is about 10 rupees. Okay, I come to the last picture before I start my presentation. Um, can you all read this? This is a circular or a directive from the uh, appropriate authority where they are announcing that all temples that are getting less than 2 lakh rupees and which do not have significant properties are to be handed over back to the Archagas and the community. This was made in 2011. Actually, this is as per a promise the Andhra government gave or an undertaking which the Andhra government gave to the Supreme Court in 1997. They will return all temples that have less than rupees 2 lakhs as annual income. And the number of temples involved is 30,000 temples, nothing less. Okay. I am presuming here that our temples are going to come back to us very soon. And when the temple come back, come back, the, the one of the uh, repeated, oft repeated questions that people ask when I go speak in the forums. Okay, um, we all understand government administration is really bad for our temples, but uh, how do we administer them once the government goes? Pooja Swami Dayana Saraswati spoke about getting temples out of government control in 2015 in Bangalore in the in a forum called the Jignasa, I think 2014. He said, how do we uh, uh, administer temples? How did we administer them before the government came? You know, we have temples for the last 2000 years. How did we administer them? There are sastras, there are methodologies which are very well evolved and which the government have done their best to destroy. So, this is not something new to Hindus, but we must remember that we have not done it for the last two generations. We all know that even today, even if some villages have become completely Muslim villages or Christian villages, we still have our temples in the, each village, each town, each city. Usually the villages have more than one temple, Shiva temple, Vishnu temple or Devi temple or the uh, Sasta temple or some of the uh, what you call the smaller devatas, those temples also. And they were all under the village community. They were taking care of it. They had ownership, they had loyalty, which is what is taken away by government control. The 1951 Act, which came immediately after the framing of the constitution, it said in, in the, I'm talking about the Tamil Nadu Act. It said that all temples having more than 20,000 rupees will come under government control. 20,000 rupees in 1951, when uh, the eight sovereign coin was only 60 rupees. Okay, but now they have 40,000 temples, and out of 40,000 temples, 35,000 temples get less than 10,000 rupees a year, which means less than 800 rupees a month which means less than 30 rupees a day. You can't even buy two bananas or one liter of milk. Forget paying the pujari. So we lost temple administration for two generations and how are we going to come back? So are temples only places of worship? Nothing else happened there. Is it a, um, like other religions, is it a prayer hall or is it a, congregation hall or a facility to do, read a namaz. No. Our temples were much more than places of worship. They were institutions. They were the hub of the society, community, learning, knowledge. If you, we talk about Sabarimala very much these days. And as you climb the 18 steps, there is a board in Sanskrit and in Malayalam. Tat and there is something beyond beyond worship and if you know the meaning of Tattva Masi, you actually don't go to temples. Swamini is here, I should say too much as if I know everything but I will be pardoned for saying so. If you know what the meaning of Tattva Masi, you won't go to temples. 
But the way to reach Sattva Masi is by starting going to temples and following the Anushtana, the special Vratam, Shvashtabari Malay has for people. So, community centers, dispute resolution, everything. The temple was the hub. So, two generations, more than two generations in some places. What were the results? We have lost our temple culture. What is temple culture? Do we know what is temple culture? Today, we don't even know what dress to wear to a temple. How should we go? When we should not go? Do we know? And temples meant people coming and voluntary. Seva. The word is Seva. If you have to lift a palanquin bearing the deity, if you have to clean the temple, if you have to do watch duty for the temple, it was Seva. All communities did it. It is not as if temples meant Brahmins and Brahmins ordering people to do this, do that. No. It's not that. Actually, Brahmins, besides puja, they had very little role. Certain amount of guidance, yes. Sastra explanation, yes. But again, not the same, very same priest. There could be others. There could be other Vedic and other scholars. Some of the Shilpa Shastra scholars were not Brahmins. And the network the temple gives us. Supposing there is a festival and there are only volunteers. Unlike today, where you have a housekeeping department in Tamil Nadu, temples. Contracts given to external agencies. Contracts given for security. Unlike that, if you see in um, ancient days, the temples were full of people who were asking, what can I do? Or full of people who have already assumed certain roles and they were doing it correctly. Now, I just pointed out one temple having um, 33,000 acres. The total amount of agricultural lands in Tamil Nadu, a lot of information data I'll be giving about the of Tamil Nadu, something about Andhra. I'm depending on Srihari here, who is part of our Indic Collective Trust, who is doing his best to get the impossible task of getting information through RTI from Karnataka Musrai Department. 4 lakh 75,000 acres of agricultural lands, 29 crore square feet of sites, 3 crore square feet of buildings in Tamil Nadu. The true income should be 6,000 crores per annum. The income that is coming is about 120 crores, which is not even 2% of the true income. So, Tamil Nadu temples are robbed of 5,880 crores at least every year of their true income. And because you don't have the income, you are not able to run your patashalas, goshalas, schools, colleges, hospitals, orphanages. Then every temples had musicians, every temple had this beater of drums, artisans who made, you know, used their skillful hands to make things, chariots, carpentry works, goldsmiths, silversmiths, all that is lost. Then loss of heritage in the name of renovation, they build modern constructions, they violate our temples, they steal our statues, our icons. So basically the fallout of government control has been only this, nothing. I am not able to say any positive thing out of uh, which had happened to our temples because of government presence. And the last point is very, very important. Temples have become highly, highly commercialized. Yesterday somebody called me from Salem. His grievance was, you go to temple, you do archana, you go as a family, you do archana, you do a sankalpa. And when you do a sankalpa, the father says his nakshatra, his name is Gotra. The Gotra is mentioned only once. Name is mentioned again. Star is mentioned. Wife or the mother. Then the children. Now the HRNC person who is giving the Archana ticket. Oh, you have four members. Buy four tickets. No, I am doing only one Sankalpa. No, no, no. Four members. You have to buy four tickets. There was some 
altercations going on in, on a Salem temple yesterday. So the commercialization is, has become really, really, uh, it's taking away the divinity from our temples.